plan for today is to untie the lines from what we're dubbing the nook and to continue heading up the rest of the way to the end of Butte Inlet. We are tucked away in this tiny little crevice in the side of the mountain, which we have dubbed the Nook. It's not marked on Navionics as an anchorage or in our cruising guide. Essentially, it's this huge crack in the mountain where this creek has washed out this kind of little alcove in the rocks. Believe it or not, we're actually still in like 150 feet of water, but we are so close to shore. We tried anchoring multiple times, but our hook was just bouncing along the bottom. So we think that the bottom is probably just rocks, that... probably covered in algae and slime and not a very good place to actually manage to anchor. But... So we tried a different technique. We ended up just tying the bow of the boat off and then triangulating it with another rope on the stern in what we've been calling a fisherman's mooring. We're not really sure if that's the right term for it. The weather was incredibly settled overnight and the boat has stayed here perfectly tucked away. We had a really uneventful night, except for I woke up around 2 a.m. with a fright. I heard a loud thump, thought that maybe one of the ropes had let go and that we were sitting on the rocks. When we popped our head out of the companionway, we were still in place, but a giant log had wrapped it up to the side of our boat. That was the noise that we were hearing, so false alarm. We moved the big tree. It's actually still floating out over there, so... We'll have to be careful not to run over it when we're getting out of here. It looks like the weather has cleared out since yesterday and we have beautiful blue skies. So we're thinking that we're probably going to untie the boat and head out and try to venture the rest of the way up Butte Inlet. So to get out of here, we're going to untie the starboard bow line first and then we're going to untie the stern line and then back the boat out as we let the port side line out and then we'll go retrieve all the lines and head off. boat starts drifting, you need to just uncleat it and then drive the boat out. Okay. Ready? You're free. We're really hoping to sail today, folks. We just got out of the nook and felt a little puff of wind. It looks like we have the slightest bit right on our beam here. We're gonna hoist the main and throw out the Genoa and see what happens. Hopefully it's enough to puff us right up this inlet.
frustrating, isn't it? Well, that's disappointing. We were fooled by the light breeze that we felt. <laughs> and now we have no wind in our sail. We could motor sail, but we can't keep the Genoa open. No. It is on the beam, but it's just... Very oh, light. Oh. Very yeah. light. We'll leave it up for a bit and we'll see if we catch anything. Yeah. We were a little bummed about the wind, but we motored on and left up the main, optimistic that an inflow wind would fill in at some point, or that a sustained gust would come funneling through a valley between the mountains around the next bend. In the meantime, it was time to make some breakfast underway. Sit back and enjoy the views. Picking a settled weather window to travel up the inlet, we predicted that there wouldn't be a lot of wind. And we estimated we had enough fuel on board to motor the 40 miles to the head of the inlet. The challenge with traveling to remote places such as this is you're pretty well on your own. We hadn't seen any other vessels during the past two days, apart from industry, and we expected we wouldn't until we made it back to the Discovery Islands. If things go awry, well, you kind of have to figure it out. And there's always a risk that things won't go to plan. So far, it seemed luck was on our side. Penetrating 50 miles into the heart of the coastal mountain range, Butte Inlet is surrounded by mountains that tower to more than 9,000 feet above sea level. They're massive peaks covered in glacial ice all year round. The minerals from this glacial runoff turn the water here a beautiful milky turquoise blue. And the melt water feeds hundreds of streams and rivers creating rich habitat for the animals that call this place home. In November of 2020, an unseasonably heavy rainfall triggered an 18 million ton landslide, equal to the combined mass of every car in Canada, causing a magnitude five earthquake and 100 meter high mega tsunami, the largest wave ever recorded in BC. The dramatic landscape here is a result of the extreme dynamic forces of the Earth over millennia. And stories like this remind us of how powerful and untamed these wild places are. The feeling is sublime, and it's humbling to get to experience the mythical proportions of a place as incredible as this.
Nearing the remote upper reach of the inlet, the landscape around us felt surreal. Butte Inlet is said to be one of the most scenic waterways in the world. And having journeyed this far, we could see why. The murky waters, shifting silts, and hidden logging and industrial debris make anchoring here at the head of the inlet hazardous. Not to mention the notorious catabatic winds that can roar through the exposed harbour from the Hamathco ice field. Our research suggested this was anchor at your own risk territory. We surveyed the anchorage in a series of sweeping passes. The silt in the bay shelved quickly and we wanted to avoid hanging up our stern in the soft mud. Plotting the approximate location of where we would like our hook to set, allowing for a wide swing area, we found a suitable spot in about 60 feet at high tide, and paid out a 6 to 1 scope, knowing that we could let a little bit more out if the winds picked up. We also tied a retrieval buoy to the anchor in case our hook snagged. It ties off at like 120. We made it. <laughs> we made it. This is the head of Butte Inlet. It feels so surreal, honestly. I'm, I'm pretty lost for words. It's, you know, it's such a journey to get up here and it involves so much planning and there's a lot of unknowns because not a lot of people come up here or at least if they do, they don't leave too much information about it. So yeah, it feels like a really big adventure and it is so stunning. It's breathtaking. Like I was, I don't know what I was expecting, but probably something that was more like boxed in and green, like um, Princess Louisa Inlet was. But this is completely wide open. And to the left, we have mountains with glaciers on them. In front of us, we have more mountains with glaciers on them. Over on our right, more mountains with glaciers. And then up there, guess what? Another mountain with a glacier on it. And then this huge, <laughs> rocky thing above us that's just absolutely incredible yeah it's pretty amazing when this <laughs> mountain behind us is like the least dramatic just because it doesn't have a glacier but it looks right? like that and it's so spiky and crazy oh it is it's something the color of the water it is just absolutely incredible and i'm so stoked to maybe spend a couple of days here mm -hmm. We'll try to see how long we can stay and we'll um, yeah. play it by ear with what the weather does. The um, mm. anchorage here is really exposed. You've got the big valley on one side, the big valley on the other side, mm -hmm. the lee shore behind you, and then 15 feet of tide just coming straight at you. It's supposed to be settled for the next few days and so we've at least got a few days, we think. Yeah. We anchored here in the head of the bay in 60 feet of water. Mm -hmm. We've got a whole bunch of road out so we can swing, we've got plenty of room to swing. The shore's still quite some way behind us and we hope that being this far out in the bay there won't be too many bugs. 
yeah, you know what, if bugs is something we have to put up with to be able to be here, then I don't think we'll mind too much. <laughs> nah, that's the least it's of It's a small sacrifice. But man, oh man, Whew. is it beautiful. Uh, we'll have to fly the drone around and show the people. The Butte Inlet. This really is like probably the most incredible anchorage I've ever seen. Unbelievable. Words really don't describe it, do they? No. Thank you for being here on this journey. Join us next week for another epic one. We wake up in a mysterious logging minefield. It is crazy. There are logs floating absolutely everywhere again. We got bumped by one in the middle of the night. Set out on an ambitious dinghy adventure seeing some grizzly bears. We adventured to the Southgate Riverside and we tried to take the dinghy up there, but it was a little too strong. And snag our anchor in the murky headwaters of the inlet. We have to work out how to do this and I don't really know what the best solution is. Please give this one a like if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. To help support our video production, you can join our pals on Patreon. For as little as $3, you get to enjoy the episodes a week early, ad-free. Thank you to our newest patrons, Joe and Dana Hulbert. We'll see you next Wednesday.